the fog has lifted and the Darwin 200 young scientists can begin their investigations. As part of the plastics programme, we don't just want to look at macroplastics, we want to look at microplastics as well. So what we did was we went to the Scilly Isles and we landed on Sampson Island and this is a beautiful, beautiful place. We arrived in heavy fog and the sand is the same colour as the fog. It's utterly unbelievable. We got there on a very quiet day. We had a look at the beach. There were very, very few macroplastics there. But we took a sample of the sand to analyse for microplastics and we brought it back here and analysed it on the ship. Now, I'm just going to show you some of the things that we use to filter it down. And you need to filter it down because, of course, microplastics are absolutely tiny. So there's no point just looking through a sand sample for microplastics because it's too dense, too much stuff. You need to filter it right down and get into the gritty of it. So what we did is we have these three filters. We have one quite wide filter that gets the, the, the big stuff out. We have a medium-sized filter and we have a tiny filter that goes down to about a quarter of a millimetre. Now, when we were doing this, it was really quite great because the sand was just immaculate. I mean, this is beautiful, beautiful sand. We were going through the smallest filter with tweezers and finding absolutely nothing. So we thought, absolutely fantastic. The sillies must be free of, of microplastics and macroplastics. We really didn't find very much of those either. But as soon as it goes through this very tiny filter, which is really designed for, um, to collect phytoplankton. We got it right down into a sample this size. That goes under a microscope. When we put it under a microscope, the proportions of water we're talking about are really tiny. We'd mix the sand with a little bit of water to make this easier. And I'll show you the size of a sample. It's that. When you dot it on the slide, these are the amounts that we're talking about, tiny dots of water. As soon as we put these dots of water under a microscope, there was a very different story emerging. We saw in one sample, one sample this size, about 40 pieces of microplastic. It looked like a shipwreck under the microscope. It looked like a forest of flotsam. In this otherwise completely perfect sand, and for me, that was really alarming because I hadn't expected that at all. And one of the sad things about it is that when you see things like phytoplankton or embryonic jellyfish moving around in these miniature samples, some of the microplastics are bigger than they are, and they're clearly getting tangled in them. I think we're all used to seeing that famous image of the sea turtle sort of trying to swim through bits of plastic and bits of old rope and we see that it's getting tangled up and it's very easy to understand that this is a problem. But exactly the same thing is happening at a microscopic level as well, to tiny, tiny organisms right at the other end of the food chain. And of course, this is enormously problematic because they ingest microplastic, they get tangled in microplastic, other organisms then eat them, and then it just filters into the entire ecosystem. So for me, that was really quite devastating to see, and as I say, a huge surprise. It's alarming to consider the reality that we have found this amount of plastic in just a few litres of seawater. Just imagine the scale of this problem across the world's oceans and the millions of tonnes of plastic that pollute the planet's waters. What are the long-term impacts on marine life around the globe?